Good morning. Good morning. I am Musa Mambala, International Scholar in Residence, Bethany Theological Seminary from where I graduated in 1983, Oak Brook, Illinois. Married to Sarah Digny, sweeter than honey, blessed with four children and five grandchildren. There is a need for moral excellence. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and by your word, O oh Lord, you created the world, calling forth life in which he took delight, and through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. And through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. On the river, your son was baptized by John the Baptist and anointed with the Holy Spirit, O oh Lord. And by the baptism of Jesus Christ's death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Oh, we thank you, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Holy Spirit, the power of the living word. <coughs> Fall afresh upon us this morning. Teach us and make us teachable. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There is a need, church, for moral excellence. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith knowledge, to knowledge, self control, to self control. Perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, godliness, brotherly affection, to brotherly affection, unselfish love. For if these things are truly yours and are continually increasing, they will keep you from becoming ineffective and unproductive in your pursuit of knowing our Lord Jesus Christ more intimately. 2 Peter 1, 5-8. In Ephesians chapter 2, 1-3, to three, again we read these words, church, and although you are dead in your transgressions and sins in which you formerly lived according to this world's present, according to the ruler of the kingdom, the air, the ruler of the spirit that is now energizing the sons of disobedience, among whom all of us also formerly lived out our lives in this way and cravings of the flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and the mind, and who are by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. And from Ephesians 4, 17 to 20, we read these encouraging words. So I say this, and insist in the Lord, that he may no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of their hearts. Because they are careless, they have given themselves over to indecency for the practice of every kind of impurity and greediness but you did not learn about Christ like this. Amen. <coughs> we have learned about Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. And he calls us to be.
be holy. Without holiness. You will not see the Lord. You can't just take for granted the life you live as a Christian, as a child of God. The Bible is written to sinful people, to those who because of their spiritual death and darkened understanding are alienated from the life of God. A condition which naturally leads to the practice of all sorts of evil behavior. And the only Christians have been idolaters and worshippers of demons, adulterers, liars, and thieves. And constantly the New Testament calls them as it does. All generations of believers do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 2. Church, where do you stand? What is your lifestyle? Is it because you have so much freedom? Or for those who have read about the apartheid system in South Africa. When Nelson Mandela was freed from prison. And they began to see him. The little children that read about him. And they sang about the song of freedom. Freedom is coming. Freedom is coming. Liberation is coming. Boy, are you sure of what you are doing here? Are you sure? I am sure. I believe Jesus Christ, who died and rose from the dead, has cleansed me and has given me power through the power of the Holy Spirit. And all I do is to share Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit and leave the result to God. It's not my responsibility to convict. It's not my responsibility to convert. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. But it is my responsibility to tell you the word of God. To expose you to what God says from the word of God, from the Bible. It's not my responsibility to tell you that this is sinful. I will tell you exactly what the Bible says. The plain truth is that when the nations turn away from moral truth and the absolutes of the Bible church, it leads to the kind of behavior spoken of by Isaiah the prophet in Isaiah 5 verses 3 through 25. In these verses, the prophet, the prophet pronounces a series of words. If you fix your eyes from verses 8 through 23 in Isaiah chapter 5, on the degenerate house of Judah, each word describes the nature of Judah's sin as a basis for the divine judgment. The list leads like the headlines of today's newspapers and teaches us that the lack of moral virtue in a person's private life always has public consequences. Church, each time you come before your God, God's hands are always over you. You remember David the king? Oh, I remember David very well. When I read the Psalms, I remember him very well. Let me remind you of one of the things he said. Psalm 32. Psalm 32, 
We read this verse from the third verse. There was a time when I wouldn't admit what a sinner I was. But my dishonesty made me miserable and filled my days with frustration. All day and all night your hand was heavy on me, O oh God. My strength evaporated like water on a sunny day until I finally admitted all my sins to you and you stopped and stopped admitting them and stopped trying to hide them. And I said to myself, oh yes, this is David. I will confess them to the Lord and you forgive me. All my guilt is gone. And verse 6 says, Now, I say that each believer should confess his sins to God when he is aware of them, while there is time to be forgiven and judgment will not touch him if he does. I don't know what you're thinking about, church! But God knows your mind. He knows my mind. He knows your strength. He knows your weakness. And God is love. Let us love God with our heart. And love our neighbor as ourselves. Church, the Bible tells me all the time that God is love divine. The Bible tells us all the time that God is love divine. Throw your worries unto Him. I'm sure He knows your mind. I'm sure He knows your mind. I'm sure He knows your mind. Christ came down and shed his blood to bring us near our God. Like a missing ship we are, but he's our redeemer. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all the rest shall be yours. I'm sure he knows your mind. I'm sure. He knows your mind. 